And this is the first time I'm ever commenting on Andrew Tate. So okay. you're actually getting my first commentary on it. Andrew Tate. I was able to sit down with Valuetainment's very own Patrick Bid David for an extended hour long interview. In the conversation, we covered a variety of topics, but I wanted to hone in on this part of the conversation as we discuss his contentious conversation with CoffeeZilla calling him out about running an MLM, his thoughts on Andrew Tate's similar business model, and how his faith drives a lot of what he does. This entire unedited extended interview is available on Patreon now, and you could access it for only $5 a month. Bruce Lawn. I think confrontation is healthy. I think, as you always say, the audience wins. When there's two people mm -hmm. that disagree, mm -hmm. the audience wins. My audience is not gonna let me uh, have this conversation with you without addressing this. One of the things that I think took my respect for you to a whole nother level is when you were willing to appear with CoffeeZilla and hash out all of the MLM PHP yeah. allegations. What is your impression of that when, in hindsight? I like him a lot. Smart I think guy. he's solid. Uh, in regards to uh, network marketing, direct marketing, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. here's the one thing I've always had a problem with. Think about why people have a negative connotation to uh, recruit and model businesses. Okay, so number one, you don't need a background check. Right. Anybody can sell it. So it attracts people that are coming from backgrounds that you don't want to have. Yep. And the next thing you know, a criminal gets in with a, who's been in jail five times and then they're willing to figure out a way to manipulate, to make money and forgery and all that stuff. And that makes the company look mm. bad. So I went through this and then I said, I can't deal with that. So I went specifically with insurance because what insurance and securities made it more peaceful for me, because the first six I was a part of mm -hmm. was not. Mm -hmm. But what insurance made it clear for me after Morgan Stanley Dean Witter is you can't get your insurance license unless the Department of Insurance has a background check on you. You cannot submit a, uh, you know, a, uh, uh, your U4 to get your Series yeah. 6, all that stuff. So right. that gave me confidence to know that not only am I doing the filtering based on your character, but the industry as well. There's, there's checks and balances. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Do you think that there was some validity to his critique in terms of the appearance of selling the opportunity versus selling the product? What I loved about Legal Shield was that I was actually selling a product yeah. I believed in, yeah. but then there was another layer of let me get people to sell yeah. underneath me. And do you think there's some concerns so, there? So there's a company back in the days called Equinox where you would buy water filters from them. I think it was started by a guy named Bill Gould and the criticism was, you had way too many water filters in your garage and why did you buy five of them at 25,000, whatever the dollar amount was. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when Bill Ackman went after Herbalife and he got approached by somebody that stood up against Bill Ackman and he's like, oh, wait a minute, I can't fight against this guy. Carl Icahn called him out. If you've never seen this, it's a must-see TV. Mm -hmm. When Carl Icahn and Bill Ackman are fighting over Bill Ackman is saying Herbalife is a pyramid scheme and Carl Icahn says, you're a pyramid scheme. Mm -hmm. You're the one that's playing a manipulative game to make money and you're screwing people over and I think Herbalife is a good investment. But you know, was there a time where people were buying way too many products at Herbalife, $5,000 that you don't need the supplements to hit a bonus goal? Of course. In insurance, keep this in mind with insurance. Mm -hmm. You're selling a product that the person needs to be underwritten for. So let's just say you last year made $120,000. I'm just making up a number. Mm -hmm. I can't sell you a $5 million insurance policy. Hmm. Why is that? Because the underwriter is going to come back and say, why does he need a $5 million insurance policy? Mm -hmm. He only makes 120. Does he have a wife? He does. How many kids does he have? Mm -hmm. Two. So can you tell me why he needs $5 million? Mm -hmm. And I don't have an argument. I can't do it. Mm -hmm. But if I say he makes 120, I think he needs 1.2 million. No problem. We can do 10 years the amount of income because mm -hmm. the wife doesn't have a job sure. and you can replace her income. Okay. So in insurance, you can't really overload on products and the garage. Gotcha. It's just not going to work out. Gotcha. And by the way, if I sell you $5,000 worth of supplements, okay. there is no chargeback. If I sell you $5,000 worth of supplements, right. if you don't use it, I don't get charged back $5,000 because you never use it. Right. But if I do buy prepaid legal and you get advanced and I cancel it next month, you got a chargeback. Okay. If I buy a life insurance policy and I cancel it a month later, you got a $2,000 check, you're getting charged back $2,000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there is no gaming of insurance. This is why mm -hmm. gamers leave insurance. Mm -hmm. Gamers typically will come into the insurance business, try to game it. Yeah. Three months later, they're like, no, this is too complicated. Yeah. I'm leaving it. I appreciate you talking about that. So let me, let me bring it full circle. So now there's a new personality blowing up everywhere. I think he's gained $2 million followers on Instagram in the last couple of weeks. Um, and the accusation, which I think this is different, but I just want to get your take on him. The accusation is Andrew Tate 
is using an MLM style format yeah. to grow his brand. I'm not sure if you're familiar with how I it am. works. You sign up for us yeah. university and I guess a certain amount of people yeah. repurpose his content, make YouTube pages around his content, TikTok pages around his content and get an affiliate for everyone who signs up yeah. to us university underneath them. What do you, first, what's your impression of, of the brand and what he's doing and what do you think about that as a business model to grow online So platform. let's talk about it. This is the first time I'm ever commenting on Andrew Tate. So okay. you're actually getting my first commentary on Andrew Tate. I think he is an absolute genius. I think he's a beast. I think he's figured out a way how to get under people's butt and skins mm -hmm. and he's, he's, he's poking it even more so. The more he goes like this, the more you react, he pushes even more. Yeah. The challenge yeah. most of the time is when you go like this, you react, oh, I'm so sorry. Right. He's just he like, oh, you don't push like it. it. Let yeah. me keep going. So, so that's, that is an art that only a few people oh, have. He wow. has, uh, Jake Paul has, uh, Connor has, Trump has, yeah. Elon Musk has. That's not a skill set that a lot of people have and they're comfortable with mm -hmm. because most people are non-confrontational and he's very comfortable being confrontational. Kudos to him. Now, let's talk about, by the way, we both follow each other on Instagram, so I like what he's doing and more power to him to make his money. I salute him. He's got a, a what? I think he's got an online program, like a university that online. he's Yeah, it's, it's a combination of different uh, courses that he's put together over the years. And he's, he's what? The, the, the accusation is that he's getting his followers to repost the stuff all over the place, so it's making him more viral and all that? Yeah. Yeah. What are you jealous about? Yeah. Whoever's saying it, why don't you go do it? Yeah. yeah. You, you mean to tell me? Well, especially if people are able to keep the AdSense. If there's all these fan pages yeah. around his content, they're post able it to on keep yeah, the AdSense. But the, but the point is the following. So, so let's, let's actually unpack what people are really saying. So let me get this straight. You're upset that all these Instagram accounts are showing highlights of Conor McGregor knocking people out. You're upset that people are creating hit lists, you knock out videos of Mike Tyson, it's got 58 million views, 42 million views. You, what is the difference between all these highlights of Michael Jordan, highlights of you know, Trump trolling somebody, highlights of you know, what Jake Paul's doing right now going up, highlights of Dana White, highlights of, why are you, what's the difference? Yeah. I think the only thing that upsets people is the following. This is what people get upset about. They get upset at how fast somebody yeah. becomes famous and passes them up. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> likes you as long as you're smaller yeah. than them until they get ahead of you. Then they're like, yeah, this guy's probably doing something shady. No, he's just whooping your ass and the market is saying, yep. that guy's better than you at market. Yeah. What do you think about that as a business model for growing social media platform? Is that something you'd be, because I know you guys have a valuetainment membership type of thing. Right. It, it, could you see that working for other guys? Hey. You guys free ran on all my content, take it, chop it, do whatever you want, and you get an affiliate for signing up to our... I think it's a brilliant model. I, we don't do that, yeah. but... but do you I think, think you, what I'm saying is do you think more people will do it after the proof of concept? I, do, I, I don't think people can do it. Okay. That's the point. Like, hey, did you hear about such and such, made so much money as a YouTuber, I'm gonna go do it, go do it. You don't think it would work? No, it's not that it would work. Uh, how many guys have a million subscriber YouTube channel? Not a lot. How many have 10 million? Not a lot. Yeah. How many have 100 million? Well, did you see what PewDiePie does? I'm going to go do PewDiePie does. Okay, go ahead, go do it. Mm -hmm. Only one other person been able to do what PewDiePie did, mm -hmm. which is who? You yeah, know, Mr. Beast. Uh, Mr. Beast. Yeah. Okay, so oh, I'm going to do Mr. Beast model. How many people have gotten successful to one tenth of Mr. Beast model? Maybe five, mm -hmm. maybe 10. Not a lot of guys that are doing it, right? So, hey, this Jake the kid, I don't know what the kid's name was, he made $21 million last year on YouTube as an eight year old kid. Mm -hmm. Go let your kid do that mm -hmm. and see if it's going to succeed. It's, it's a lot of work, yeah. it's no, not easy. Right. And by the way, you, you, everybody's got a different gift. Like, for example, you know how these uh, uh, Dan Bozerian, how he blew up on social media, everybody was upset. Right. Okay, first of all, Dan Bozerian has been Dan Bozerian for a long time before Dan Bozerian became public. And then the audience who likes the younger Hugh Hefner model with the girls and the partying and the boats and the traveling and the guns and all this stuff, man, I'm fascinated by this guy. Like Gianluca Vacchi blew up all of a sudden. Gianluca is a friend. We've sat down together. He's another guy, Italian businessman, mm -hmm. worth a few hundred million dollars, got beautiful girls, young girls, and he's doing the dancing and all this stuff. People like that. Mm -hmm. But how many other people try to do that? It's, it's, not, a, it's not an easy model yeah. and you have to be able to answer and talk the way he talks. 1.1% of 1% can do what he's doing. Yeah, no, I agree with yeah. you. I mean, as other people are watching and they're saying, oh man, 
let other people repurpose my content in exchange they get an affiliate which is weird that they're calling it an mlm because it's an affiliate which it's is not different, an MLM. right it's yeah. an affiliate and so that's what i mean by other people like say i don't know uh, uh, logan paul wants to start his own membership he has a bunch of courses available 50 bucks a month people who sign up using their affiliate repurposing his content make uh, whatever, 50% of the first month. That's what I meant by the business model there. Not Obviously, Andrew Tate has something that very few people have, but I mean other creators in this yeah, space. Yeah, but, but, you, but you have to, okay, so, um, so what I'm saying is go do that. But if you're not interesting, no one cares. True, true. true this true. guy's a very, very, look, so you go to, you go to a, a church, okay, you're a Christian guy and you're, you're unapologetic. You go to a church, you sit there and you listen to a pastor speak. Okay, I'll never forget one time, I was like, hey, I have, a, I have a guy, you got to come meet him. He knows every single word in the Bible. You tell him any scripture, he'll tell you what it is. So I go meet with this guy. And I said, so what's in Galatians 1.6? Boom. What's in Deuteronomy this? Boom. What's Proverbs this? Boom. What's Psalms this? Boom. Were these verses you had memorized? No. Or you were just... Oh, you I just, have it. You and have I'm, asking him, hey, I'm just <laughs> flipping awesome. through the pages and he has it. So, That's so good. So impressive. Yeah. Here's a problem. He's been preaching for 20 years. Yeah. His church had 100 members. Yep. So let me get this straight. You knew this much this about much the Bible and you good. only got 100 people. So it's more than just knowing how to. There are people that have made way more money than Tate that don't know how to entertain good. and challenge like him. That is a very, very, special, very yeah. special skill set. You, you brought up faith. Uh, I watched one of your videos about you reaching out to a pastor, mentor, friend of yours. And, uh, and, and you built a relationship with him. And I think this was the guy that married you as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't, I don't think a lot of folks have heard you talk about faith. I've heard you use a lot of terminology like lukewarm. You just put a video out called um, Don't Be Lukewarm in Business. Uh, how, what role has faith in, in, in being a Christian played into your, uh, into your journey as an entrepreneur? So, so let me tell you, so, it's going to be funny when I tell you this. So I'm at a, I'm at a crossroad in my life, mm -hmm. and I am more like an Andrew Tate. Okay. okay? I'm 22, 23. I'm that guy. And I'm living bodybuilder, the whole bit. Like bodybuilder, I'm going to Pimps and Hoes in Vegas. I'm in Vegas every other week. Pimps and Hoes used to be the biggest party they would put. I'd go to all these naked, after hours, all this. This was my world, and I loved chasing women and having them chase me. It was a fun game because it was easy, it was attractive. And then at that point, I had to make a decision what kind of a life I wanted to live and who I admired the most and what direction gave me the least amount of distractions to be able to scale at the levels that I want to scale in my life. Okay, so I said, yeah, I'm not sure about this. I'm an atheist, and then I started seeking. A guy comes from my school, I was just with him last week in Glendale, who uh, uh, was probably the most temperamental guy in, in school. Uh, both he and I had a 1.8 GPA in high school. Both of us were math wizards, but both of us had a 1.8 GPA. So GPA, so math came to us like nothing, mm -hmm. but we could care less about school. So we go to college first semester, and uh, first semester, him and I don't go to our classes, all but playing his cards. Mm -hmm. Anyways, he drops out. This is a guy that smoked weed every day, you know, drugs. I don't, you don't want to tell me, you don't want me to tell you what the drugs he used. Peace, I mean, you, you name it, he did everything, okay? Mm -hmm. I go to the army, I drop out. He goes and tries to figure out life through many different avenues. I come out, he comes out, we're still partying. One day, I run into him at the restaurant. He's doing a $20 million year business right now, restaurant. Um, one of the biggest restaurants in LA. So he says, hey, I found God. I start laughing. He said, no, really, I found God. I said, bro, <laughs> stop. He said, I'm telling you, I found God. I said, dude, listen, there's certain people that will be allowed in heaven. You and I don't have a spot. In the life <laughs> we've lived, there is no. He says, I'm telling you, I found God. I said, dude, whatever. He says, can you give me a Friday night? I said, what club are we going to? He says, club pastor such and such. Wow. I said, dude, I'm not coming. So I'm thinking he's still pulling my leg. Yeah. He says, I'm serious. So we go. Anyways, we go. On a Friday night. On a Friday night. Every other Friday for the next 18 months, I'm with this guy 6 o'clock to 2 o'clock in the morning. Wow. That's me from 20, 24, 25. What this did to me, I'm still not a believer at this time. I, got, I became a believer at the tail end of it by myself. And what is this, a Bible study? A it's church? a Bible study. It's just no, a Bible it's at a house. study. In, in Paznaz, in Pasadena, Mono, we're okay. sitting there. We're going through with me, him, and a couple of our guys, and yeah. none of us are qualified. We're all living a rough life. And then that got me to look at things in a different way. So then faith came in, into my life January 21st of 04 is when I gave my life. God's always been on my side and he's been way too good to me. In life, I have a choice to believe it in or not to believe in it. I'm taking the risk of believing that he's there. Mm -hmm. It's a big risk, but I'm taking that risk. 
But the part that you have to realize that I'm slightly different than others is I understand the choice to make to go a different route and choose to be a Tate. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, and I also think he's got a spiritual side to him as well. I think it's a very different a, guy. He claims to be Orthodox Christian. I, I think he does have that. Versus me going this way. Both, there's a risk, right? I chose this risk. And, uh, you know, I love kids. I, I would have 20 kids if I had it my way. And I think faith's going to play a very important role in raising them properly. And, and the other part on why when you say, Pat, you don't talk a lot about it. Here's why. If you ask me, people I've done business with that I trust the least, is when they talk about God and Jesus to earth. It's a red flag for me that I don't do business with. I know this sounds kind of weird to you. No, it's good, though. So when they're kind of like, well, let me tell you what Jesus this and Jesus this, yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'm good, man. It's yeah. a red flag for me. Versus if we do stuff together and then lay, like, I didn't know that about you. Then later on, I found out, really? Yeah. Huh. Interesting. Never imposed, never did this, never did that. Okay, cool. I'm good with this. Yeah. Versus, no, here's what we, we have the pressure. No, I, I'm, I'm uncomfortable with that. So if you enjoyed this video and you want to check out the full version, make sure you hit the link below and sign up for our Patreon community. And you could also check out Patrick McDavis' channel over here and the time I appeared on their Valuetainment Money channel over here.